Joining me now with more in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton, who sits on the Senate Intelligence, Armed Services, and Judiciary Committees. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Maria. Good to be on with you. I want to get your take on status check of where we are with 51 days before Election Day. And let me start with a soundbite from that debate last week and Kamala Harris making this statement. Watch. And as of today, there is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world the first time this century. Senator, I guess the fact checkers took the night off. Your reaction? Yeah, Maria, I don't know where those two moderators were fact checking Kamala Harris with that lie, as with so many of her other lies. I guess they were busy wrongly fact checking President Trump. Um, Kamala Harris's claims that there are no American troops in a war zone, I, I bet, would come as a surprise to the thousands of troops we still have in places like Iraq and Syria. They're getting repeatedly hit by mortars and drones and other attacks by Iranian backed terrorists because Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have appeased and emboldened the Ayatollahs for four years. It would probably come as a surprise to all of the sailors we have in the Red Sea who are facing the constant threat of missile attacks from rebels and outlaws in Yemen that, again, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have turned a blind eye to, that they took off the terrorist list in their first days in office after Donald Trump had put them on the list that just this morning fired a ballistic missile into Israel. Kamala Harris's lie about American troops not facing danger in war zones around the world is just one more example of why she's a weak, failed San Francisco liberal who is not up to the job of being our commander in chief. Senator, let me stay on foreign policy for a moment with the breaking news of the morning. The Houthis say that this new hypersonic ballistic missile launched at Israel will continue. They're vowing more attacks going into October 7th, which would be one year since this started. What do you want to say about foreign policy expectations should Kamala Harris win this election? Well, I think we know what we'll get with Kamala Harris. It's what we've got for four years with Joe Biden, Kamala Harris in office. If anything, it'll probably be worse because she's even more uh, ideological and weaker than Joe Biden. But for four years, we've had war and conflict breaking out around the world. Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine and Hamas's uh, slaughter of more than 1,200 Israelis last October, the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. And now we have a bunch of rebels and outlaws in Yemen that are shooting ballistic missiles at Israel and at our own troops in the Red Sea. I mean, where did a bunch of rebels and outlaws from the mountains of Yemen get the missiles and the drones and the parts and the technical know-how to make these attacks? They got it from Iran which has been emboldened and appeased for four years by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. By contrast, we know what we'll get with Donald Trump, which is exactly what we got in his first term, a largely peaceful, stable world with no new wars. You know, the open border has also created an opportunity for these very dangerous gangs. We've got this trend, the Aragua gang raging in New York. And the latest is that these hatchet-wielding, hard-partying migrants have taken over a Texas hotel. We saw those horrible pictures in Colorado two weeks ago where this Venezuelan gang took over that apartment complex. They're doing the same or efforting to do the same in Texas right now. What do you want to see in terms of the border? Because now Kamala Harris is promising to actually make a difference on the border, despite the fact she's done nothing about it in the last three and a half years. Yeah, Maria. Kamala Harris promising to secure our border is like O.J. Simpson promising to find the real killer. We have a wide open border because of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. She's the one that promised in her first campaign for president that she would decriminalize illegal immigration, that she would grant a mass amnesty, that she would give illegal aliens health care at taxpayer expense. But look what we have under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris with this wide open border. We have gang warfare breaking out in cities across America, foreign gangs taking over apartment complexes or hotels or threatening 
to do so. Many Americans are aware uh, of the murderous rampage uh, of the Salvadoran gang MS-13. In, in El Salvador, they've actually gotten control of that gang under President Bukele because he's cracked down on it. Yet Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have allowed them to rampage across the United States. And now you have other gangs from places like Venezuela that some law enforcement authorities are like MS-13 on steroids. What President Trump will do, again, is exactly what he did in his first term. He will close the border, he will crack down on illegal alien crime, and he will begin to deport the millions of illegal aliens that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden led into this country. You know, unfortunately, we're not seeing these stories in the mainstream media, and this is very disappointing and destructive. Kamala Harris chose ABC for an interview, and they edited down her word salad answers to make it appear quite concise. Why is it that we're not getting the true story of the status of this country on the mainstream media? Well, the mainstream media is fully in the tank for Kamala Harris. Um, they are totally united between behind trying to stop Donald Trump from returning to the White House. Kamala Harris has a radical ideological record that she doesn't want to talk about to the extent she says anything, like she now wants to secure the border or she now supports uh, fracture, fracking for oil and gas. It's not a flip-flop. It's not a shifted position. It's a lie, and the media goes along with it. Look at what's happened in the situation in Springfield, Ohio, Maria. You had a town of about 58,000 Americans and, and 20,000 Haitian migrants have flooded into that town in recent years. You don't have to think that they're all bad people. You don't have to think that most of them are bad people to understand the severe strain it puts on the community of Springfield. You, you got Haitians who don't know how to drive causing accidents all around the roads of Springfield. They're flooding emergency rooms and community health centers. So if your kid breaks his arm, good luck trying to find a doctor. The local schools have had to spend more than $400,000 on Haitian Creole translation services alone, money that could have gone for American citizens who wanted new uniforms for the football team or needed a new playground at the elementary or needed more bus transportation for the band. These are all entirely legitimate concerns that the people of Springfield have been pleading with their elected leaders in Washington to address. And what does the media want to do? The media wants to attack them wants to tar them as racists and bigoted and nativists because of reports that Haitians have also been killing ducks or geese from the city pond. Credible, first-hand reports that should be investigated. I don't know if they're true or not, but they shouldn't be used to dismiss all the other very legitimate concerns that the citizens of Springfield have about the illegal immigration that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have unleashed on this country. Yeah, and it's an, an important point. We're looking to confirm all of that as well. Senator, it's great to have you this morning. Thank you, sir. We'll be watching your work. Thank you, Maria. Senator Tom Cotton. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.